What country has been fricked over the most in history? Poland. 1655. Sweden invades Poland with the help of the Tatars and Cossacks. Poland is devastated. A population of 10 million is reduced to 6 million. 1700s. Russia, Prussia and Austria fight over Poland. They settle the dispute by dividing Poland into thirds. 1791. Catherine the Great invades Poland to break up its new democracy. 1793. Russia and Prussia take over half of what is left of Poland. 1795. Poland is non-existent for the next 123 years. 1870s. Russia attempts to eradicate Polish culture, making Russian the official language in the Russian partition. Prussia does the same in their portion of Poland. 1890s. Poland experiences mass emigration due to poverty. 4 million out of 22 million Poles emigrate to the United States. This good luck for America. 1915. World War I. Poland becomes a front. Poles were forced into the Russian, German, and Austrian armies and forced to fight against one another. 1919. The Polish-Soviet War. 1926. Pilsudski makes himself dictator of Poland. 1930s. Poland signs a non-aggression pact with Germany and the Soviet Union. 1939. Germany and the Soviet Union sign a non-aggression pact. 1939. Hitler and the Soviet Union invade Poland. Mass arrests, executions, and exiles begin. 1940. The Katyn massacre was a mass execution of Polish nationals carried out by the Soviet secret police. The massacre was approved by Stalin. The number of victims is estimated at about 22,000. 1941. Poland remains under the Nazi regime for the next three years. Many Poles are deported to labor camps. The Polish intelligentsia are executed. The Germans exterminate Poland's 3 million Jews. 1941. The Nazis also killed roughly 5 million Gentiles as part of General Planost. 1944. The planned destruction of Warsaw occurred while Russian rescuers prevented the Allies from helping. The capital was destroyed. Every monument, every historical building, every church, every library and the entire national archives. The city was rebuilt by the Soviets into a soulless grey nightmare during the Cold War. 1945. The Soviet Union, the United States and Great Britain meet at Yalta and agree to leave Poland under Soviet control. 1990. Prices in Poland rise by 250%, with incomes dropping by 40%. 2010. A Polish plane crashed in Russia killing all 96 people on board, including the president and former president, the chief of the Polish general staff, the president of the Bank of Poland, Poland's deputy foreign minister, 15 members of parliament and senior members of the Polish clergy. Russian involvement is suspected by many. Spain. Here's why. If we want to determine which country has been the most fricked over in the world, assuming we are judging by per capita as opposed to volume, we need to look at several factors. The first question must be, which country's population is doing the most fricking and the most flying via airplane combined? On average, if, and it's a fairly big if, we can use the GDP as a reliable determinant of the percentage of a population that chooses to fly instead of taking a train vehicle or boat, because they can afford it, and then we cross. Check this with the highest TFR, total fertility rate, we end up with Angola. So, though we have the highest percentage of people who are freaking in airplanes and thus freaking over other countries, Angolans. Angola is in the top 10 of GDPs in Africa, a continent which easily smokes other continents for TFRs, and is also in Africa's top 10 list of countries by TFR. This is true of no other country. So, after this the question becomes, what countries are Angolans fricking over? Well, the non-Angolan country with the highest population of Angolans, which requires flying to, is Portugal. Namibia has the highest population of Angolans for a country that isn't Angola, but it's right next door, so presumably the Angolans walk there. Now, to reach Portugal from Angola via plane, one needs to fly over the Democratic Republic of Congo. Congo. Cameroon, Nigeria, Niger, Algeria, possibly Morocco, and then Spain. This is where it gets a lot more speculative. Which country do these Angolans choose to frick over? 
Based on the length of their flight, I think it's fairly safe to say the last country before landing. They've had the entire flight to get to know the prospective person they're going to frick. Or if it's a spouse or significant other, they've had the entire flight to build up courage, get to know the flight staff, feel out whether it's a possibility. Plus, they're over Europe and excited to explode into a new life. In conclusion, Spain is the country with the highest percentage of people fricking over it. I'm speechless, absolutely speechless. If we are speaking historically it has to be the Euphrates River Valley, it's the site of one of the earliest civilizations so has had the longest possible chance for war, famine, disease, genocide and the like, plus it is now known as Iraq which has had some pretty tumultuous history in its own right. Sorry guy who said Poland, but your woes started in 1655 AD, the Euphrates River Valley around 5000 BC. Yeah, but that's not a country. Armenia has had a pretty rough time. They used to have a pretty big empire. Then crap went down with different people's nations. Then a freaking genocide. Then they got stuck being Soviet. And now they're independent again but they aren't great friends with any of their neighbors. Especially Azerbaijan who they're at war with. And Turkey who still vehemently 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 It's a shame. Because it's a very interesting beautiful country. But their 6000 year long history is pretty rough. And don't forget the earthquake in 1988 that killed 50,000 of them, cost them 14.2 billion dollars, and left half a million people homeless. Ireland. Start with the first Viking raids of 795 and work your way up through the genocides, surrender and regrant, plantations, penal laws, famines, etc. Egypt. Its histories be, after having some early success and being a large empire and civilization, it got passed around like a joint at a college party. Once it started its decline, it was invaded and conquered by Canaanites, Libyans, Nubians, Assyrians, Babylonians, and some others until Alexander the Great took it. Then it became Macedonian with an Egyptian flavor. Ptolemy established a dynasty until the Romans came and used Egypt as a food bank ATM. After the Romans, Byzantines by this point, came the Sassanids, after that Arabs in various incarnations, after the Arabs, the Ottomans, after the Ottomans, the Brits, after the Brits, came various attempts at self-rule, some better than others. Obviously Iraq, you have that whole Assyrian thing, then a millennia of infighting, then the Greeks, then the Romans, then the Mongols, then the colonial powers, than the Americans. Iraq is a dusty shithole with no trees for a reason. You never edited anything you liar. How about Ukraine? Mass starvation under Stalin, invasion and occupation by Nazi Germany, and now the Russians are stirring up trouble again. Historically, is there anywhere worse for your country to be located than between Russia and Germany? Keeping to the 20th century, East Timor, not just because of what has happened but because so few know care about it, proportionately, the worst genocide since the Holocaust. Australia used it as a shield in World War II to protect themselves from the Japanese. 10% of the population is killed in the country laid waste. Portugal doesn't do much of anything to rebuild it, on the verge of independence in 1975, Indonesia invades with the green light from the US. 10% of the population is killed in a few months but stern resistance results in a stalemate in the fighting. To keep them from losing, the US and Australia, UK, France, and everybody else, gives them tons of weapons to launch a horrific two-year offensive. 20% of the population is killed, many in concentrations camps. Repeated offensives continue, piling up the bloodshed. For 25 years, the country was a prison camp, with constant torture, disappearances, massacres, rape, exploitation, you name it, all with US approval. Finally a UN referendum takes place. The Indonesians plan to destroy the place if East Timor votes for independence. The US says okay. The country is destroyed, utterly destroyed, with what remained being looted. No one is ever held accountable for what happened. Excepting a brief period in the late 90s, whole thing took place with almost zero attention and the whole history has been purged, especially the US role. Happily, things are quite a bit better now. Mexico. Cortes invaded and toppled Aztec Empire. 
Spanish takeover and rule, Catholic Church indoctrinate natives. Mexican independence removed Spain's control but by this time a Spanish ruling class had already taken a strong hold. French invade and take control of the country. After being depleted from fighting the French, President Polk declares war and takes half of Mexican land. Mexican Revolution begins to remove several brutal Mexican dictators. 1.5 million people killed. Pre take power in the country. Essentially the same people have ruled Mexico until 2000. Elections were rigged sometimes in painfully hilarious ways. Mexican drug war 100,000 killed so far in an ongoing war. I was doing a drunk history about Cortez and the Aztecs. Super interesting but definitely a bummer. I had trouble making it light. So the only real punchline I could come up with was and Mexico has never recovered. If you ask Hungarians, they are among the big losers. They lost two thirds of their population and land after the first war, being of course part of the losing German-Austrian-Hungarian alliance. Ace Malpert was given back. Unfortunately be Hitler so it was given back to the newcomer neighbor countries. Most of those two thirds weren't Hungarian in the first place and wanted nothing to do with Greater Hungary and its crazy communist dictatorship. Probably places like Iraq and Afghanistan. They got so fricked over by the Mongols, they never recovered. Look at Afghanistan. They only have one city, Kabul. The rest is just farmers and warlords. Laos. The USA bombed their country to the point of having barely any of its former population. Then got the Hmong to doubly frick things up. All of this during the Vietnam War. And ever since, people die daily in Laos from landmines or unexploded bombs. Also, Cambodia's capital was completely abandoned by Pol Pot during his Khmer Rouge regime. And he forced millions to countryside farming villages. Read up on Pol Pot. His thoughts alone killed almost 2-3 million people. Let's not forget Vietnam. Invaded by the Chinese and French at various times, and had one of the roughest civil wars in history. Southeast Asia in general is my answer, except for Thailand, and including Myanmar. I know they had a civil war, but I'm not sure the details. Latvia. My brother. They say in Gulag you are issued one tenth potato per day. You will be wealthy prisoner indeed. I'm aware Africa is not a country, but if the continent's countries had been allowed to evolve national boundaries organically instead of via colonialism, it'd be about as tenth as fricked as it presently is. Russia. Basically even before the 20th century peasant life was almost medieval and very hard. First world war they lost around 3 million men, then the revolutions happened and the civil war. 2 2.5 million dead. The 20s and 30s saw famine. Deportations, executions, gulags, a very tough time in peacetime. And that's before the Second World War started, where 24 million Russians died. Stalin is said to have killed somewhere between 20-60 million. The numbers are so big if you were to add them all up estimates could be off by tens of millions. If you were male and born in Russia around 1920 your life expectancy was very low. It would take you 278 days to count the Russians that died in World War II if you did one per second. Balkans. If we are not getting fricked over by some attacker, then we are trying to frick over each other. Korea gets my vote. They've had to live in the shadow of Japan and China, and they've suffered grave injustices for a couple thousand years. I'd also add India, thanks to the British Empire, and Poland to the list. Bosnia. Ottomans take over, 1493 to 1878, Austro-Hungarian rule, 1878 to 1918, lost a great deal of soldiers during World War I, now under Kingdom of Yugoslavia rule, 1918 to 1941, decimated during World War II, many non-Serbs killed by Chetniks, SFR Yugoslavia from 1945 to 1991, Bosnian war and subsequent genocide, Afghanistan. First the Mongol, British, Indian, Soviet, Pakistani, then the American and allies. The country is still a wasteland for opportunists and tyrants. I really feel the Afghan is pains. One day, I wish, there will be peace for the people of Afghanistan. No more invaders. China. Constant oppressing in times of turmoil in early China. Still happens today, Hong Kong, for example. Typing Rebellion, 
Boxer Rebellion, Cultural Revolution, numerous others occurred whenever the mandate of heaven was lost. Amazingly high amounts of retarded leaders for such an advanced country. Extreme nationalism bred from said leaders. World War 1. Various European companies and America install spheres of influence. Though this also had positive effects. Hong Kong and Macau. It mostly bred animosity against foreigners. Guaylo. World War 2. Nanjing Massacre. Invaded by Japan. Much like Korea. Women are forced into comfort roles as sex slaves. Any female unwilling got raped, then killed and probably raped again. Thousands of corpses are defiled for example. Swords and other objects shoved into various aura faces, including man-made ones and other war crimes. Unit 731. Burying humans alive, etc. Mao Zedong. Great leap forward. Millions die as yet another idiotic leader Mao Zedong works them to death with promises of a better life. Encouraged thousands of children to take his side. Teenagers would assault, and sometimes kill, random people for no reason besides looking like they were anti-Mao. Mao moved the whole generation to the rural areas where they tended to farms. Dowager Empress Sixi, yet another stupid leader, she turned down the chance to connect to the western world. Slowing China's rate of growth tremendously in comparison to Japan, who accepted it. Confucianism. While one of the most dominant beliefs in the triangle of Japan, China, and Korea, this slowed the advance of technology and created an isolationist state. Confucian scholars held much power until later, so if it didn't help them, they wouldn't accept it. Honduras for sure. I mean, the place was already in rough shape by the time the Spanish turned up. But its lack of easily accessible mineral resources, among other things, meant it got pretty badly neglected. After the Spanish Empire collapsed Honduras basically became a playground for big fruit companies from America, and now is being ravaged by the drug trade, not to mention still feeling the effects of Hurricane Mitch. So yeah, Honduras never really had a chance, its history is just exploitation after exploitation. Good lord, poor Vietnam. Over thousands of years, just about everyone has run roughshod over those poor people. It's like a speed bump on everyone's way to world domination or something. The Philippines is a country riddled in warfare. Everything was fine and dandy until Spaniards arrived conquering everything they can conquer. They 80 years war happened. During that time, Chinese who wants to control Philippines revolted but got defeated by the Spaniards. And for a few years the word in the country is revolt. We got the Seven Years War, Cochinchino campaign during the, the late 50s early 60s. Philippine revolution happened and set our declaration of independence resulting in more bloodshed. Then the Spanish-American War happened. And for the first time in the Philippines history, we are not under control by Spain. But yada yada this and that, the Philippine-American War occurred. Didn't really get a chance to participate during World War 1. World War 2 on the other hand was a whole different beast. Oh not to mention a dictator called Marcos and the martial law that would weaken our military till present day. Can't believe no one said Chad yet. Everyone's focusing on the negatives. So I'll brighten it up. Chad's achievements. Not gone yet. Philippines. I mean being colonized for almost 350 years isn't that bad but it isn't that good either. We never had a successful revolution. Just revolutions and then the Americans came and promised our independence. Then the Filipino-American war occurs. We, Filipinos, lost that war. Then the Japanese came. The Americans and Filipinos lost to the Japanese. But on death march happens. Many people died. The American from outside the Philippines came and took back the Philippines. After many 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 years, there are Filipinos governing the country. The Philippines stops being fricked over temporarily until Ferdinand Marcos was elected president. He may have done things that improved the economy but martial law was one of the things where he fricked over with. Philippines. People going missing. Police brutality. Many more people died. And then he finally left the country. The following years had many corrupt politicians spawning in the government. Including our president at this moment. We also faced strong typhoons yearly and had faced the strongest typhoon in the world. Ukraine. Polish rule. Turkish rule. Tatar rule. Russian rule. Soviet rule. With the side of unintended genocide. And what's happening now? 
Somalia. Well, it wasn't another country. It was basically a civil war that turned Somalia into a Pirates of the Caribbean the Purge mutation. Lebanon, which is basically Syria's beer right now. Actually, Africa and the Middle East as a whole have been fricked more times than a prostitute that pays 5 an hour. Came expecting Poland to be the top answer, and strangely enough it was. Poland is still here though, so my definition the answer to this question is going to be a country that no longer exists. The Incan Empire was in the middle of a brutal civil war when some strange people showed up and kidnapped its in power, and it is long gone now. India. First they are invaded by the Mughals, then all of the Europeans be like, Imar take your spices, gold, food and enslave your people, and then England be like, you're mine. I think Poland, even though it was not a country for long, for the short existence it was alive it was taken over so many times, poor Poland. Definitely Belgium, Germany wants to invade France, well it's gotta invade Belgium first. France decides to attack Germany, it looks like France is gonna march through Belgium, unless Belgium picks a side, in which case the other side will destroy Belgium utterly. Belgium is the pit stop for European invasions. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. for now.